Inspiring, uplifting, encouraging. This is the Acts 29 Life. And welcome back to the Acts 29 Life. My name is Vaughn Howard and I am the assistant pastor here at Apostolic House of Worship. If you've been watching the Acts 29 Life here, you've seen Pastor Wood, the first three uh, Bible studies that we had was actually one Bible study broken up into three sections, but we saw that uh, pastor preached on welcome to Pentecost. How do we get into this Acts 29 life? How do we enter this Pentecostal style life, if I could put it that way? And so if you haven't seen that, I encourage you to go back and watch those lessons. You can find them on YouTube. There's also links on our Facebook page. Um, if you want to go to Facebook, you can go to facebook.com forward slash Angelo. Our Facebook, excuse me, our YouTube page is youtube.com forward slash a how assistance so you can check us out there as well but as i was saying pastor wood talked about welcome to pentecost and then over the last week uh, last two weeks excuse me last two lessons he did a study begin a study on i will build my church and so we're going to continue that this is part two of i will build my church it will probably be broken into two lessons much like part one was broken into two lessons but Matthew 16, uh, verses 18 to 19, Jesus said unto Peter, I say also unto thee, thou art Peter. Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. If Peter was given the keys, to the kingdom of heaven. We need to obey what he says and do what he says in the book of Acts. Now, whenever you give somebody, if you give somebody keys to your car, you give them free will to take whatever out of it, to drive it wherever. Hopefully they don't betray that trust, but you're trusting them. So when Jesus is referenced as giving Peter the keys to the kingdom of heaven, we need to listen to what Peter says, what Peter did in the book of Acts. The church is the only thing today that cannot be shaken. Individual saints, local assemblies may have problems, but the church is as solid as the rock of revelation that it is built upon. Listen, we live in a tumultuous times. I mean, all you have to do is open up an internet browser, go to whatever news site you like. They're all biased. You, you, whichever side you like to read, you're going to get that side depending on what site you go to. I mean, duh, that's just the way it is. There is no real uh, impartial news anymore. It's all biased. Um, but if you go, you can read, this world is falling apart. It, there's so many things just going wrong with this world today. But I'm so glad we have a church and a God and a salvation that cannot be shaken. The earth will be shaken. That's in Isaiah chapter 2, verses 19 through 21. The nation of Israel is to be shaken. That's in Ezekiel 38, verses 19 through 20. The heavens and the nations will be shaken. That's in Haggai chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. And everything that can be shaken will be shaken. That's in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 26 through 29 so we, this is it's gonna happen if it can be shaken it will be I'm so glad I serve a God that can't be shaken the church cannot be shaken the gates of hell cannot prevail against it because Jesus is building his church Acts chapter 1 verses 9 through 11 when he had spoken these things that's speaking of Jesus when he was outside the city talking to his uh, disciples right before he left them while they beheld he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up behold two men stood by them in white apparel which also said ye men of Galilee why are you standing here looking up into heaven that's my paraphrase and this same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven if Jesus had not ascended we would not have the Holy Ghost how do we know that well let's go back to the Gospels John chapter 16 and 7 Jesus said nevertheless I tell you the truth it is expedient for you that I go away for if I don't go away 
the Comforter will not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. John 14 and 26, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He said he's going to send that Comforter in his name, that name of Jesus. The uh, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. John 14 and 18, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. We have a comforter. Jesus is not among us bodily anymore on this earth, but he has sent a comforter back to us. So many people want to deny that comforter, but you cannot deny that Holy Ghost, that comforter. Why would you want, not want something that keeps you, that saves you, that comforts you in the time of trouble? Comfortless or orphanos equals orphans, fatherless, bereaved. Comforter, parakletos, one called alongside to assist. If Jesus hadn't ascended, his earthly work would not have been multiplied. John 14 and 12, verily, verily, I say unto you, Jesus said, he that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I'm going back to my Father. And they, Mark 16 and 20, and they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following, amen. If Jesus hadn't ascended, he could not have begun his heavenly work. He had to ascend so he could send that comforter back to us. Hebrews 4, 14 through 16, see and then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, into the heavens, excuse me, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet he was without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Wouldn't have happened if he had not gone back into heaven. First John 2 and 1, my little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not not. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Advocate or parakletos is also known as comforter. It's only used by John. Angels appear periodically in the book of Acts to work for the saints, but the Holy Ghost is there constantly working through the saints. Read Acts over and over. The, the disciples, the children of God, the people of God, those that have been born again of the water and the spirit as spoken by John, or by Jesus, excuse me, in John chapter 3 to Nicodemus. Those people were working with the Holy Ghost working through them. The angels were working for the saints, but the saints had the Holy Ghost working through them. Hebrews 1 and 14, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? 1 Peter 1 and 12, unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. This same Jesus shall so come in like manner. Let's go to Revelation chapter one for a minute, verses seven through eight. Behold, he cometh with clouds, every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Even so, amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. So when the angel said unto the disciples, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This was an angelic rebuke. They weren't to just stand there. They were to go do something. They were told, go do this. And yet they were standing there, gee, that's odd. What did Jesus just say? When I'm gone, go back to Jerusalem and tarry and wait for the promise. You can read this in Acts chapter 1. But they stood there. Hey, check it out. And they were supposed to go back to, so the angels had to rebuke them and say, look, guys, go like Jesus told you to. Acts chapter 1, verses 12 through 14. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon Zelotes, and Judas, the brother of James. They all, these all continue with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. This is, 
some historians say, okay, that this was the upper room where they had had the Last Supper. I, I can't confirm that, don't know that, for sh don't know that for sure, but this is what some historians and theologians say. Notice who was in that upper room, the composition of the group that was in the upper room. There was the 11 apostles minus the Judas the betrayer. The Judas that's mentioned was not the same Judas. The women, those who followed Jesus and his apostles, you can find that in Luke chapter 8. Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Jesus' brethren who didn't believe before his resurrection. John chapter 7 verse 5 says, for neither did his brethren believe in him. Uh, side note, that's such a shame. Your own brothers, your own brethren didn't believe that you were God manifested in the flesh. Wow. If your religion honors Peter or Mary above other disciples, I, I want to tell you something. We don't deify Peter. We don't deify Mary, the mother of Jesus, right? They were human just like we are. They were mightily used, Mary, to bring forth the, the virgin birth of Jesus Christ, the one who would save us from our sins. Peter was a man, a headstrong, stubborn old goat who Jesus used to bring that message on the day of Pentecost. But they weren't super holy. They weren't super spiritual. They weren't to be deified. They were men and women just like me and just like you. So if your religion honors Peter or Mary above other disciples, note that scripture does not do this. Also note that Peter and Mary were both in the upper room. They both repented. They both were baptized in Jesus' name. They both received the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. So how much do you honor them? Should we not also be baptized? Absolutely. Should we not also speak with tongues when they're filled with the Holy Ghost? Absolutely. How easy it would have been for someone to bring division into this beautiful assembly on the day of Pentecost, this beautiful assembly of humble people. The members of the Lord's family might have claimed special recognition. They could have criticized Peter for his cowardly denial of the Savior. Remember, Peter denied Jesus three times, just like it was prophesied he would, but he still came back and repented. John might have proudly reminded the others he had faithfully stood at the cross had even been chosen by the Savior to care for his mother, but there was none of this, none of this. In fact, for the first time, none of the disciples were arguing over who among them was the greatest. They were with one accord in one place. That phrase, one accord, occurs six times in Acts. We're going to stop there, and I encourage you to tune back in next week when we finish this lesson, lesson two, or part two, I guess you might say, of I Will Build My Church. Again, we're so glad that you joined us on the Acts 29 Life. We encourage you to come back next week, check it out, and go back and watch all, if you haven't watched any other episodes, go back to our YouTube page, youtube.com slash ahowassistant. We'd love to see you tune in. Um, we'd love to see you at church. We're located at 1202 Pricer Street here in San Angelo, Texas. Goodbye, God bless, and we hope you enjoy the Bible study.